One of the first things, after we get all these skills under our belts, one of the first things you have to decide when you're going to record a band or do an actual real session with real musicians is how am I going to approach this? And there are really two ways. We've really gone over the overdubbing idea. There's overdubbing, and then there is live. I'm putting live in quotes because we don't mean in front of a live studio audience. We mean all the musicians playing together, tracking at the same time. As you can imagine, there are pros and cons to each one of these. Let's talk a little bit about it. We started with overdubbing because it's actually the simplest. Now, why is it simple? For one thing, if you're only ever doing you know, one artist, you know, one musician at a time, you need less equipment. Now, that alone is pretty much the make or break thing for a brand new engineer. If you don't have much equipment, there's no way you can bring six people in and track them all live. We know for a fact that your isolation is better. In fact, it's perfect, right? You're not going to have any bleed coming from the drums if the drums weren't playing at the same time as the acoustic guitar. So perfect isolation. It's also easier just to kind of schedule one person at a time. So rather than trying to get everyone together at a time that works for everyone, you can just kind of take your time and bring this guy in and that guy in and, and what have you. Um, so a lot of people will do overdubbing because it, they just don't have any other option. That said, a lot of bands do not want to do this. Why do a lot of bands want to go live? Well, you know, all these things can be inverted for live. It's, it's more complicated. It requires more equipment. Isolation is a bigger problem. It's not easy on the schedule, so why, why do you want to be uh, recording live? Well, probably the number one reason is energy. A live band thrives on being together, all up on the stage at the same time. It's really hard, and not everybody can understand this until you've either lived it or talked with people who've lived it. When you're on a stage, there is a energy, there is a vibe, there is something special that goes on musically that is really hard to recreate or capture in an overdubbing environment. So a lot of bands, especially the live touring bands, bands that gig, bands that are playing in bars 200 days a year, they tend to record mostly live or as close to live as possible to preserve the energy and vibe that they get when they're at a, in a, in a live show. So that's one of the reasons that bands tend to go to larger studios or who have been doing this for a while because they don't want to be stuck with the overdubbing process and they need somebody that has 16, 24, 32 channels to track them live or at least in like a live setup. And they need somebody that has 20 microphones, you know. <laughs> they need somebody who has a fair amount of equipment. And they're willing to deal with all the extra stuff that is um, the application. And really, there's your number one reason, energy. We could also say vibe. So if you do go this route, obviously you have to have all these other things um, solved. You've got to have the equipment. You've got to have the, the time, the schedule. You've got to have more setup, especially if, you're, if you don't actually have a, a full-on studio that just stays set up all the time. It's a huge undertaking to set up a live environment somewhere like Lovett Auditorium. Now, if you do decide to use an overdubbing approach, there's a lot of things that need to be lined up uh, in a in, a, in an order that makes sense and is going to help you get to your goal as efficiently as possible. The first thing is going to be what is going to serve as your map? The easiest map for overdubbing is a click track. 
the band determines that the quarter note sounds great at 94 beats per minute. Uh, you set up logic to be at 94 beats per minute, and now you're ready to go. You've got a map for the whole song. So then, if that's what you're doing, you would proceed with the instruments in the order that makes sense. We'll talk about that in a second. You can also do a click track plus a scratch vocal. And that is going to serve as um, a little bit extra energy because the drummer needs something besides just the click, most likely, in order to know where the verses go, where the chorus goes. Unless he is an exceptional drummer, he has a hard time knowing that he's on measure 135 if nobody else is playing with him. So the idea behind a scratch vocal is you get your click track going, and then the guitar player and the vocalist lay down the song. And the drummer then can listen to the song and the click track, and that's how he's going to lay down his drum part. Um, I would mention that you can do a scratch vocal without a click track, but if you go that route, they better be impeccable musicians, and they better really, really know that they are capable of putting that entire song down in a way that feels right without the safety net of the metronome. The scratch vocal doesn't have to be perfectly in tune. It doesn't have to sound just the way you want it to sound. Really, it just needs to feel good. In fact, the better the scratch vocal feels, odds are the happier the musicians are when they're tracking to it. They need to feel like you are just in the moment performing on stage so that they can put themselves in that mentality. They can get the psychology fired up of playing live. So the scratch vocal needs to feel really good. It's got to have a lot of energy. It's got to be exciting. And we can fix pitches or bad words. It can, you know, you can even forget a whole line and just be like, uh, uh, as long as they can figure out where you are, the scratch vocal is doing its job. So once you've decided how your map is going to lay out for the entire song, how the other musicians are going to be able to know where the third chorus starts, um, then you can start layering things in. And we order things in this way usually. Drums are one of the first things to go down. If you put the drums in after some other part that is a final part, it's really hard for the drummer to put the beats in the pocket based on the guitar part that he's listening to. It's much easier for the drums to be established and then have the other instruments go on top. Now, it is possible to do drums and bass at the same time. In fact, this is preferable for some people because it lets you keep a little bit of energy and vibe happening. The bass player can be plugged in direct, stand right next to the drummer, and the two of them can <laughs> stare at each other, lock in, lay down the groove, and that can go to, uh, to tape if you've got enough channels for that. But this is the first stuff that goes down. If you're not doing drum and bass together, then usually bass would be the second thing to go down. So we're kind of building it from the bottom up. Uh, we got our click track going, or our scratch vocal, or both. Then the drums come in and lay down the entire song, either with or without the bass. Next comes the bass. And then at this point, you've got a lot more flexibility. You could put your rhythm guitar down, You could put other parts here and here. And most of the time, you're going to want to wait until you've got just about everything done for the lead vocal. Now, if you were going to put a shaker or some tambourine or something like that in, you don't have to wait for the lead vocal for those things. Um, but generally, this is going to be the way that you would approach an overdubbing session. Now, for a live session, we've already talked about the fact that you're going to need a lot more equipment. You're going to need microphones. You're going to need channels. But in addition to all of that, you've got a lot more work. It, everything that happens in an overdubbing session to get to the end result has to happen simultaneously for a live session. You're taking care of every musician at the same time 
the pressure is a lot higher. Um, the, the prep time is a lot higher. And you've got all kinds of problems that you didn't have before. You have to worry about isolation. That means, how do I keep too much of one instrument from getting into the other instrument? Because if I have a ton of drums in my acoustic guitar mic, guess what? I can't do very much with the acoustic guitar tone without messing up the drums, and vice versa. So we've got to think about how sound is getting from one microphone to another. Uh, we have to think about multi-channel. Monitoring. Because now you've got five or six guys who need headphones and a mix at the same time. Um, we've got to worry about all the things that are so easy to do. When you're just doing one thing, but now you're doing it to 16 things. So you're line checking 16 things. You're gain staging who knows how many different gain stages. So the live session is really a completely different animal. And you've also just got a bunch of people who are depending on you to be efficient. You know, you might have six people who have carved out, and it's not been an easy thing for them to all find a time so they can all be off and come do this at the same time. And so when you're the engineer, if something's not working, if something's going to end up costing you an hour or two to chase it down and fix it, then you are inconveniencing, you know, five, six people who are thinking, oh my gosh, I, ha I, I can't stay here for another three or four hours, you know. So all that to say, a live session is high pressure, and you would probably want to do a whole lot of work with friends and people that you know in these types of settings before you ever actually try to charge somebody that you don't know a significant amount of money to do a live session. Um, it is, to this day, something that I take very seriously when I'm doing it, and um, you always have to be ready to solve things as quickly as possible and, and put tons of time into it to make sure that when people show up, you have thought of everything that you can possibly think of, you have double-checked everything you can double-check, and everything that you need is working and ready to go so that you can get done what you need to get done. Um, and if it all works, you feel great about yourself, the band's happy, and everybody high-fives, and, and it's a good day.